Okay, this is the chart for the date that Mercury stations retrograde. This will occur on June 18th at 1 a.m. in Washington, D.C. Or at least in Washington, D.C. it will occur at 1 a.m. Now, um, oh, my notes. some things I want to give you before we get into this chart. Uh, at this time, one of the things I want you to mark on your calendar is going to be June 11th. On that day, we can expect we can expect an active day. There we go. We can expect a very active day um, that could be challenging. Certainly, very dynamic, but also challenging. And the reason I say this, and I, I want this date to be marked on your calendar, is that this occurs just seven days before the station. So one of the things that we're looking at with this particular station, now we know with a Mercury retrograde or any planet going retrograde, we're feeling the effects before the date it becomes exact. So for the entire week before the retrograde is official, we're under the shadows of the eclipse, or the eclipse under the shadows of the retrograde, and we are feeling the effects and impact of the retrograde, which means that this date, June 11th, 2020, uh, which I picked out for specific reasons, we are definitely going to be feeling the impact of this particular retrograde, so it is worth marking your calendar and watching. On that particular day, some things that I would look at are some significant uh, upsets and upheavals in terms of relationships and also finances, as well as, yet again, uh, more confusion and mixed messages and a lot of finger pointing and blaming and uh, scapegoating, uh, especially where people in positions of authority or leadership are concerned. Uh, now, this also does translate down to our personal lives, so we should be aware of that. The other thing that I want to draw your attention to is remember, on the 18th is when the rate rate is exact. However, the other date to keep in mind, let's put this, we'll put this over here, is the day immediately afterwards, which is June 19th. On June 19th, this Mercury is going to be particularly significant. And active. So all of the things that we are expecting from this Mercury retrograde, we're really going to see in, in glorious, vivid colors on the 19th. So the two dates we're watching around the eclipse are going to be June 11th and June 19th. These are your hot spots around this eclipse. The day of the station is also important, but we've got a couple of additional days. Um, surrounding this so we really want to keep an eye on. The other thing that's important about this particular retrograde and the June 19th date is a couple days after that, the sun will be going into Cancer. On June 21st, the sun will be at zero degrees Cancer, which brings us into, guess what? That's right, our next eclipse. But we'll get to that in the other video. All right. So, this particular Mercury retrograde, why is this significant to us? Well, significant for a number of reasons. And again, like, um, well, pretty much everything else this month, this is a, a high-profile transit, so it's not a typical Mercury retrograde. And the reason is, this particular retrograde, it stations at 14 degrees, 46 minutes, Cancer. This is the degree of the fixed star Sirius and Canopus. Sirius, in particular, is known as the dog star, and it is the more, um, what's the word I'm looking for? It is the more aggressive, I suppose. Um, it's the more aggressive of the two. What's it for you? Of the two fixed stars, Sirius is the most aggressive of the two and the most uh, visible and has the most impact when it's felt. Sirius is often associated with wealth and fame. Um, and we remember those keywords because who doesn't want wealth and fame, right? But it is also associated with dog bites, uh, or pro sound is associated with dog bites. Serious, but still, it's associated with dogs, dog bites, uh, fire, uh, <laughs> fire, and all manner of pro 
problematic things here. Let me pull up a list for you. Okay, so you can look up most of these uh, these these um, information about the fixed star series yourself. But here's what I'm going to give you that I think is particularly interesting about this per this particular degree. At 15 degrees, Cancer, it is also at the position of the 22nd mansion in the Chinese. Chinese Shu or, or Xing, which is also translates as the well. The quote about the passage about this is as follows. This is the head of the phoenix, associated with beauty, water, navigation at sea, hygiene, cleaning, repairs, and refurbishments. Because of the association of cleanliness with godliness or virtue, this mansion also presides over law and order, moral uprightness, and cleansing of moral wrongs. The luck in this mansion is said to vary because of the conflict of the elements involved. Labor is rewarded while idleness is sanctioned. It's good for taking exams, tending to the herbivorous animals, and all types of industriousness. It's very good for gardening and widows, bad for funerals because of the risk of epidemics and sudden death, though and all projects in progress should be worked on instead of being put aside. So Sirius has a lot of really long uh, associations uh, and positive ones. But Sirius is a hot-headed star, um, and it brings a lot of, of energy and uh, literally sheer firepower to anything that it's amplifying with its signal. With Mercury making station at this degree, and also the 22nd, managed, managed, the 22nd mansion uh, that we call Xing, or well, this should also be a significant day in terms, as far as the United States is concerned, in terms of getting this uh, business with these Minneapolis police officers and the now becoming global protest under some reasonable consideration and finding some type of proper resolution for it. Now, this is not the same as saying that we're going to have charges and convictions for these police officers, but it is to say that we should be well on our way to finding the, the correct path in handling this and bringing it to some type of closure. I would not look for any matters that come up around this time from June 11th to June 19th because of this station. I would not look for any matters that come up during this time to untangle themselves until Mercury goes direct again in the following month or so. But for now, understand that during this time period, we've got a tremendous amount of, of, of vigorous activity and a lot of um, horsepower or firepower being brought to situations that's really going to uh, propel things forward. And this particular degree has everything to do with fixing uh, was it moral wrongdoing, right? Correcting the scale, bringing things back into balance, justice, right? So this is promising. This is very promising. So keep the faith, folks. Keep the faith. It's going to be a messy Mercury station retrograde, but we will get through it. And and part of this is you know untangling the mess that we find ourselves in. Now during this station, one of the things you're also going to notice is that. Mars and Neptune are still within orbit of each other. Mars is there, right there with Neptune. It's three degrees away. It's still in a tight orb. For the Washington, D.C. chart, okay, this means with this rising on chart, we can expect more of this Mars-Neptune activity to be highlighted at the time of the station or brought to full, clear view. Everything that comes to the angles, we can see clearly. So if there if there has been any underhanded, shady, back room, smoky room kind of underhanded dealing uh, that has been specifically intended to defraud or otherwise be at the unfair expense of other people, this is when it's all going to come out into the open. And the reason I say that is because not only is it because Mercury is making the station retrograde, which is giving us a chance to go back, right? So we're literally going back over stuff and, and pulling up the rug to see what's been swept underneath. But also, this Mars is moving in closer to a square 
with that Sun in Gemini. This Sun in Gemini was problematic here before. Remember this one? Right? It's part of this eclipse. Okay, remember that T-square? See, it's in Mars here. So Mars was approaching the Sun here under the eclipse. So this was already problematic because this eclipse really brought it all kind of to the table. By the time we get here, on the 18th, on the 18th, this Mars is now moving in closer to exact square to the sun, really bringing home whatever trouble, well, bringing home whatever roosters need to come home to roost. Let's put it that way. <laughs> okay. Other things that are going on at this time, Saturn and Uranus are, they're, moving away from each other a little bit, thank God. But remember, Saturn is moving back into Capricorn, so we are getting literally inching closer and closer and closer to Saturn coming back home to its original side of Capricorn and giving us a second chance. Remember, when Saturn goes back into Capricorn, we're getting a second chance to clean up and do things right. Never, ever, ever take for granted your second chances in life. So for those of you who are wondering what this means in your personal life, here are some things that I would give you. The first thing I would do is look for where Mercury makes a station in your chart. We know that Mercury is retrograde in Cancer. We also know that from June 11th to June 19th, for various aspects, this whole span of time, the 11th, the 18th, and the 19th, are these are big hotspot days. The things that I would look for, rather, and Mercury is also dead center uh, in Capricorn, or Cap Capricorn, in Cancer, the things that I would look for in your chart, I wouldn't worry about the degree that Mercury is at. What I would look at in this particular case is anywhere you have either the sign Cancer on a house, um, and maybe even slightly before that, and also, in this case, if you don't know what your time of birth or have your houses, look for planets in the signs of Aries, Cancer, Libra, or Capricorn. These are all your cardinal signs. If you have planets in these degrees, this is where you're going to be feeling this Mercury retrograde, okay, or this Mercury station. The other thing, again, for those of you who carry planets in the mutable signs, remember we talked about this during the eclipse. Again, the same thing for you guys. It's Gemini, Virgo, Sagittarius, and Pisces. You are not out of the woods yet. In fact, because of this, whatever you're dealing with during the eclipse, you're going to be feeling even more acutely or tightly uh, now as Mars moves into a tight, exact square to the sun. It may not reach the sun before it leaves Gemini, but I can promise you that when the, the sun gets down to about 29 degrees in that node and Mars gets closer, it'll still be in orb, so the, the pressure will be on, and you're going to feel it. So pay attention to what's going here. But ultimately, right now, what we're all looking at is where this Mercury station is occurring in our charts. So look for Mercury uh, specifically to wreak havoc and deliver whatever this messenger, this harbinger of good or, good or ill, is going to bring you. Look for that to arrive in the house's ruled, or the, the house and locations ruled by cancer in your chart. If you can find this in the house, obviously the house, the area of life is going to be highlighted or, or most immediately impacted by this, but again, we always go to the planets. We're not worried about the houses, it's planets first. So look for planets in either your cardinal signs, Aries, Cancer, Aries, Cancer, Libra, or Capricorn. If you have planets at these signs, and specifically around 15 degrees, this is where you're really going to feel this. Otherwise, look for planets that are in those signs. Okay, so that is our Mercury station uh, notation. <laughs> All right, so I'm sure at this point you're listening to this going, good Lord, is there any good news? <laughs> And honestly, <laughs> I would be thinking the same thing. But you know what they say, save the best for last, right? 
Okay, so here is the good news in this chart. So remember, this little devil right here, which again is a great fixed star to have, this promises all sorts of gains uh, and positive outcomes. Uh, yeah, I can't say enough good things about this. Um, it is, look at this, it's making a beautiful trine to Neptune. Now Mars is a little wide, so Mars is moving away from that, but it is still within orb of Neptune. And this means for anybody who has planets in Cancer, or Pisces, or Scorpio, right? Scorpio over here. This sets up a trine aspect, or a conjunction, or a grand trine. So for anybody who's got planets in Pisces, Scorpio, or Cancer, planets, specifically planets, um, you can expect to get uh, great opportunities occurring under this station. So keep an eye out for that and make hay while the sun shines. So the other thing too, I mean, I, I wouldn't necessarily go out and gamble. There's nothing gambling, like nothing's happening. Um, what I would also say is that with this particular thing, with this Mercury station, look for opportunities to really uh, signal boost whatever your creative efforts are. So whatever it is you're trying to accomplish or move forward on, this is the day we can expect like things move. Now remember, Mercury is retrograde, so it's going backwards, which means that there are things happening uh, that are kind of taking us backward in time or backward in, or what appears to be backward in our progress. But these are, anytime something's going backward, it's a second chance. It's a moment of hesitation that gives you a second chance to reconsider if there's a better way to do things or to spot things you may have overlooked the first time around. So don't discount the value, the positive value of retrogrades, especially Mercury station retrogrades. Those of you who have planets and water signs are going to get the biggest boost and opportunities out of this. Uh, those of you who have planets and water signs anywhere near these degrees in any one of these signs is going to get a huge opportunity to be noticed uh, and to get uh, some helping hands and some opportunities to get lifted up, move forward, and, and get some protection and guidance and just good old-fashioned luck and uh, attaboys for what you're doing. So th this is going to be a tremendously good time. So there's the good news there. Now, on a global level, this also means that we're all going to get an opportunity to go backwards and, and take a second look at things and figure out how we can do these things better and more effectively, right? Which isn't to say you've been doing it wrong. It just means that there's an opportunity now for doing things a different way that are even more effective. That's the beauty of this particular Mercury station retrograde. So use it to your advantage. So that's the other good news. Now, the, again, <laughs> because we're all like, there's got to be good news in here somewhere. All right, so here's the other thing. Right now, Saturn remains retrograde. And so does our poor little uncomfortable Venus, right? So Saturn retrograde is not comfortable. Venus retrograde is not comfortable. These are not the happiest things for us to deal with right now. Um, and that Venus retrograde has just been painful from day one, right? You know, because Venus, the thing to remember about Venus, right, is that Venus represents the, our pleasure in life, the things that we enjoy, social graces, society, communication, you know, the feel-good things, the whole reason other people exist, because when other people are not being knuckleheads, um, and we see a lot of that, when they're not being knuckleheads, people are a tremendous source of pleasure. And we're really understanding what that means now because of the pandemic and because of the social isolation. We're all starting to recognize the reason and the value other people exist in the world because it really is very lonely without social intercourse, which is what Venus represents, and especially in Gemini. Uh, it is very lonely without social intercourse. We need that, even if it's not uh, our ideal social intercourse. The fact that we're out there, you know, bumping up against and talking to and interacting with other people who have very different sets of eyes and ears on the world around them is part of what brings us pleasure and gives us the necessary social stimulation we need, which, by the way, Venus in Gemini is social interaction. It's social stimulation. It's social intercourse. 
One of the things I would look for as far as more freedom of movement and more satisfactory opportunities to get out and, and be with people and enjoy those moments more freely and more thoroughly will be when Venus goes direct. So until Venus goes direct, we can expect that social isolation to really bite, like just be just a, like, ugh, like a pain, right? Now, again, back to the good news. <laughs> When Venus goes direct, it's going to let up a lot of the intensification of loneliness that is coming with this. Now, before that happens, of course, this month with this station, look here, Venus remains. It's, it's kind of wide, but it's still there. We'll take it. It's still in trying to Saturn retrograde in Aquarius. And what this means for us is that with all of this, right, these beautiful grand trines going on, and in spite of this, which is this big old honking square that we're dealing with still from the last eclipse. Now we're on the other side of it, so this is the fallout from it. This Saturn helps bring wisdom and awareness and uh, growth if we're willing to do the work and helps us lock into place um, and kind of bring home the important lessons that we need about what matters in our relationships with our communities and the people at large. So again, this whole Venus retrograde thing has taught us a lot about how much we need other people in our lives, even if they're not our perfect candidates for people to spend time with. Um, and the Saturn and Aquarius retrograde has also allowed us the opportunity to more effectively use this time for introversion to really examine ourselves and make good positive growth from it, obviously, if we so choose. So there's some good news. <laughs> um, and what else do we have here? So let's just jump back here for a second. So remember this, right? This, this burr in the saddle here, this Mars square sun. So we're looking at this and this is just, oh, geez, God, will this ever be over, right? <laughs> grumble, grumble, grumble. But again, here's the good news. This, at the same time, is going to be sextile Jupiter and Pluto and never ever forget Jupiter and Pluto together makes the impossible possible. This is the miracle maker. So Mars Neptune sextiling Jupiter Pluto is giving us the opportunity to create our own miracles, literally to manifest our own miracles. But the more important thing is that the Mars Neptune Jupiter Pluto combination. Let me write this out for you. Mars Neptune Jupiter Pluto with this particular lineup as a as an astrological sentence, I suppose we're going to put it that way, right? This represents mercy. The, the critical concept and lessons of mercy and compassion. Mars and Neptune represent compassion in action. It's mercy uh, and forgiveness, and, but actively, actively so. Right? So it can go either way. Mars, Neptune, and Pisces. Neptune, Mars, Neptune, and Pisces in any sign tends to feel sorry for itself. It's so hypersensitive. Sometimes it has trouble getting out of its own way. Luckily, Neptune is in Pisces where it is its strongest. So don't let people uh, make a horrible case for Neptune and Pisces. Oh, drug addicts. Oh, addiction. Oh, yeah. Oh my God. Um, if you hear some people talk about Neptune and Pisces, you'd think it was the end of the damn world. It's not. Neptune and Pisces is the Christ energy. And it's very much Neptune in its own sign of Pisces is the strongest possible position for it to be in because it teaches us all about the important positive sides of Neptune. But like anything else that is transcendent with all your outer planets, you have to make the effort to reach for it. So you can go high or you can go low with these things. But if you want to go high, you're going to have to you're going to have to move your own wings to get to those altitudes to get up there. Otherwise, falling to the bottom and further down is really easy to do. It requires no effort at all. So if you're seeing Neptune and Pisces or any other planet in its sign of rulership, like Saturn and Aquarius, um, and you're not seeing positive benefits from it, one of the things to ask yourself is how much effort is really being made here to reach for the highest expressions of this thing. And these are transcendent planets. Outer planets 
are transcendent planets. These are not things that come naturally or easily or normally to us. We have to make the effort to get there because it's just beyond the horizon, as it were. So these are things to consider. In any event, mercy, mercy and the Christ energy. Um, and I use the, the Christ reference because I'm in the United States and this is what I'm familiar with. So there may be like Buddha energy or something else that would be a better descriptor, but I don't want to make any mistakes. So I'm using this because it's a familiar term for me. Um, mercy is Mars and Neptune. That's compassion in action. That's mercy. Jupiter and Pluto makes the impossible possible. It's the miracle maker. So mercy and miracles are the key words that we're looking at with this particular combination. If we are willing to do the work and reach for it and flap our own wings to get higher up to reach those altitudes, we can get there. So this is what's being made possible right now. This is our portal. This is the window we can get through if we're willing to make the effort to go through that portal. So there's your good news. <laughs>